Hello everyone, welcome back to Backbone Exotics. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about quarantining your new pet reptiles, why it's important and how to do it. So stay tuned. All right, so one of the most overlooked things when it comes to keeping reptiles is quarantining your new animals. And I see this a lot with beginner reptile keepers. You know, they've only have one or two, just a few. You might think that just because you have fewer animals, you should skip this step. And that is a very, very uh, huge mistake that I see with new reptile keepers. I also see this a lot with experienced reptile keepers. And they usually do this because they don't want to wait and they just want to have their animals straight into their reptile room or however they want to get them straight into breeding, feeding or whatever. And that is a huge mistake that you always want to avoid. So I'm here to educate you guys on why you should avoid it and then how to properly do it. So today I'm mostly talking about ball pythons in specific, but this goes the same for all reptiles, leopard geckos, crested geckos, iguanas, beer dragons, you name it. This is a very important topic. When it comes to ball pythons, there's one of the huge main reasons why you want to quarantine. You may be getting promised a top quality animal you may be purchasing from a reputable breeder at least you think but a lot of times since they have a lot of animals and they can't individually care for each one or if they're just buying and reselling or if they really don't care about their animals they only care about the money they may be selling you some sick snakes and the most important and the most common one is snake mites they're basically fleas, but for snakes, as the name suggests, and they are horrible. Exactly like a flea, they start sucking the blood from your snake, and that's absolutely horrible. And the way they do it is that they go underneath the scales of the snake, and they attach almost like a leech, and then from there they start sucking blood and everything. And they reproduce fairly quickly, exactly like fleas. I'm not too sure the numbers wise but I'll, I could research it really quickly and leave it right here of how many mites you can end up with just a handful of mites they rob a lot of the nutrients from the blood flow of the actual ball python so that's super super you know scary and I keep saying ball pythons but you can't forget that this affects all types of snakes and even other reptiles even though it says snake mites I have seen them and I have heard stories that they have attached to other animals that also have skills and then started doing the same problem. The crazy thing about snake mites is that they are tiny. They are super, super small and they are pretty hard to take care of. It's not like a dog or a cat where you just put the medicine on them and there you go, game over. You might have to give them a couple of baths to get rid of those fleas, but it is a completely different story with snakes and reptiles. Like I said, they are tiny and they can travel through very, very far distances. A lot of times you might see them get in the tiny little crevices of your enclosure. And in order to treat it, it's fairly simple, but that's a whole different topic. It's just very, very tedious because they get in small crevices and stuff like that. The reason why you want to quarantine your animal is to avoid that one sick animal full of those parasitic uh, mites to then migrate onto your other snake because the medicine is really expensive and if in my opinion it's way a hundred times better to spend the money and treat one snake rather than however snakes you have in my case i have around 16 or 17 uh snakes currently so imagine treating every single one of them would be very very tedious especially because you have to take out everything in their enclosure rip everything out to make sure you get in every single little crevice and you apply the medicine absolutely everywhere. Another thing about mites is that they attach onto your shirts, your rings, phones, you name it. They like to hide in those little tiny crevices. So now that you go grab this infected animal and it gets underneath your fingernails or whatever, like I said, they are tiny. You Nine times out of ten, you will never be able to see them unless they are really big adults full of blood. But now you go handle the other snake and now you easily transmitted it onto your other snake, which is obviously not what you want. That would be the number one reason that would affect other snakes. But let's say you have a leopard gecko and then you have a ball python. You might say, well, if the snake has mites, well then what's the problem? Let's go ahead and put it in the same one. We'll go ahead and treat the snake, but not the leopard gecko. Well, here is where another problem comes in and that would be number two, respiratory infections. 
Respiratory infections, specifically URIs or upper respiratory infections, they come from a variable amount of things such as improper care, of course, and that would be very, very low heat and high humidity. Upper respiratory infection mostly affects humidity depending species like boas, chameleons, and other animals like that. That would be because people don't have enough ventilation inside their cages, they may spray it down way too much, and like I said, not providing the heat needed. The thing about upper respiratory infections is that it spreads like a wildfire, and a lot of times it is really hard to identify until it is way too late and then you end up with a dead animal. However, if you quarantine your animal and you know exactly what to look for, you're able to treat it before it transmits onto other animals. It is the most scariest infection because it is airborne and you may have this snake in one corner of the room and your leopard gecko in the other corner of the room, but it is airborne like I said. So in no time, it will go from your snake straight into your leopard gecko or whichever other reptile you have. And for the third main reason why you want to quarantine your animals is because of parasites. The thing about parasites is that they can't be seen or felt kind of like a mite. You can see them, feel them, squish them, whatever. Respiratory infection, you can hear it, see it, and stuff like that. The only thing about parasites is that they are impossible to see until your snake goes to the bathroom. Now, parasites come from a very amount of places. They can come from the food. So if a rat is infected with a parasite, let's say you go catch a rat out in the wild, or you have some rats in your attic and you put a, a trap, then you trap it and then you decide to feed it to your snake. Well, that rat may have some parasites. And now that your snake ate it, those same parasites are now transmitted into your snake. The most common way that snakes actually get um, parasites, which then transmits it into your other reptiles, is wild caught species. For example, you may be getting promised and being shown proof of a snake being captive born, for example, a California king snake, when in reality they are just wild caught and then they just tame them down and then they are sold in the pet trade. And of course, out in the wild, there's no regulations. So, you know, you're not able to monitor what goes into the snake. So nine times out of 10, those snakes are, you know, jam packed full of those parasites, which then easily transmits into your other snakes. So those are the top three reasons why you should quarantine your animals. There is hundreds and hundreds of other reasons why it's super important to quarantine your animals. But those are the top three and the most important in my opinion. All right, but with that being said, let's start talking about how to avoid all these crazy things that can happen to your pet reptiles. And of course, the most safest 100% foolproof way of you know, preventing all of these harmful things of happening to your reptiles is quarantine. And of course, that's the topic of this video. So let's get straight into that. Okay, so I'd like to introduce you guys the newest addition to Bagmon Exotics. And as you can see, he is very hungry in that classic S shape, very, very still head, very little uh, flicking of the tongue. So I'm gonna have to break that before I get bit with a simple touch on the head. All right, so like I said, I would like to introduce you guys the newest addition. He is a male clown, and I believe his previous owner named him Buster. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna keep the name or uh, change it up. But I want you guys to pay attention to his enclosure. So this is his quarantine tub, and I wanna be careful not to make too much sudden movements because he is still in feeding mode. But I want you guys to pay attention to his enclosure and tell me what you guys see. So first of all, it is a very, very, very basic setup. It is an appropriately sized tub. I believe this is 28 quarts. This is perfectly fine for an adult male. Some of you guys may argue, but in my opinion, this is 100% the best and a lot of other professionals would agree. As you can see, I just have a pepper, paper towel as bedding and there is no substrate. Ooh, this guy's hungry. Break that again. But as you can see, the substrate is paper towels and not actual cocoa fiber, cocoa husk, or you name it, whichever substrate that you guys use. The reasons why you want to use this uh, paper towel, and sometimes it is a hundred times better to use paper towels rather than even newspaper, is because of the white background. So of course the paper towel is a white background, and the little uh, mites are some black creatures, so they are really easy to spot when they're off of the snake, so that's a number one good reason 
on why you should use this is because they are a lot easier to spot the snake mites. And if you are able to identify it, then you are able to correct it. One interesting fact about fleas and snake mites and all other uh, parasitic animals, like even ticks, is that if you see some of the ticks and um, snake mites and stuff like that on your animal, nine times out of 10, there is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more animals. Because the only ever time that you will see a, a snake mite or a flea or a tick ever on an actual animal is while they're feeding. Nine times out of 10, they are in the substrate creating homes because that's where they lay their eggs, they go poop, and the poop is half digested blood. So that way, whenever the eggs emerge, the eggs start eating and the larvae start eating the actual blood, which then, you know, makes them get into adult stage of their life. And that way the cycle you know, begins all over again. Then the adults go on the actual host, drink the blood, go on the substrate, make their eggs, poop, and again, larvae eat that, become adults. So that's very, very interesting. And that's why I said it's very important to have a white background so you are able to easily see and identify the problem. Number two, it is just a simple water dish. That way, in case there is snake mites, the snake will actually start swimming in the little water and start soaking and taking baths. And he is just basically trying to um, drown the mites. The only thing about mites is that they have very, very strong hydrogen bonds. So that way they become waterproof. So yeah, if you see your snake, you know, soaking up in a bowl, that's a very, uh, not very good sign, especially if he's doing it very often. So I would really um, pay attention to that. All right, and that's pretty much it. That's all there is in the tank. Like I said, it's super, super basic, but that's exactly how you want it because you want to be able to identify all the problems that may occur. So of course you want to uh, provide also a heat pad. And the way you want to do it is that you want to have your animal in a completely separate room. That way, if you have to handle this animal or if for whatever reason, whenever you open up the the enclosure to add new water to feed or something uh if a snake might jumps on you if the respiratory infection you know whenever you open up the lid particles fly everywhere so that's the number one reason why you want to quarantine in a separate room of course if you can some people may argue that they can't but in my opinion there's always ways to find how to do it you could always drop this off at a friend's house at your parents house girlfriend spouse whichever i'm pretty sure you can find somewhere to quarantine your animal in the meantime um, in order to protect your other animals that you already have. And this is pretty much it. This is their quarantine setup. Like I said, you just want to have them in separate rooms. You want to make sure you observe them daily. Make sure there's no snake mites and no respiratory infections and such like that. And you want to quarantine your animal for bare minimum a week. And you want to do that because, especially snakes, they don't poop very often. And it might sound gross, but you need to wait 100% at least until the snake goes to the bathroom. That way you are able to smear the poop. Sounds really gross, I know. But smear it, even if you don't want to smear it, just look around, make sure there's no worms, parasites, or just make sure that the, the stool is not runny and that it looks normal and like a healthy snake would go to the bathroom. So like I said, you want to wait at least a week. If you can go longer, the absolute better. And like I said, this little guy has been quarantining for about a week now. And he already went to the bathroom. He already pooped and stuff. So I was able to uh, make sure that there was nothing wrong going on by looking at his poop. So now he is 100% ready to go into his new home here in the actual reptile room. So let me make him a ball. Let's see if I can make him a ball. And then... So I can show you guys his colors really up close. So here he is. And some people may argue that clowns are one of the most boring uh, recessive genes because they say that they don't age well at all. And I'd have to completely disagree with you guys. The other day I was having a debate with other people in the reptile hobby in the community. And they were all saying that you need to stack up to three genes in order for the clown to actually look decent as an adult. But like I said, I'd have to completely disagree. This snake is about two years old and look, he is just gorgeous. He doesn't really have that clown head pattering anymore, but the alien heads like with the dripping effect that the clown does is still there. I mean, look at those colors. It goes from a white to a low yellow. 
high yellow, like a more to like a chocolate and really dark blacks along the sides. All right, so now that I finished showing him off, let's get his enclosure ready. All right, so this is where we just were and quick little update on the little baby scorpions. They are doing absolutely wonderful. They are all eating uh, pre-killed small crickets and they are eating them just as fine. And whenever like the crickets start twitching and stuff like that, it's very cool because uh, the actual scorpions will actually try to pinch them and try to sting them, which is really, really, really cool. But anyways, this is old enclosure and this new guy is going into this uh, rack that I have for all of my hatchlings and for some of my males and also too for uh, my grow out females. So this is gonna be this guy's little new enclosure. This is gonna be his tub for now. So you can go ahead and go in there. And one easy way to get ball pythons in their enclosure is just to give them tail tickles. And there you go. And I am gonna give them a hide, but I like to collect my own wood because I used to work at a winery and I'm still allowed to go there. And what I do is that I go out in the middle of the forest and I find um, wood pieces that are shaped almost like hides and I'm 100% able to bring them home. And the good thing about them is that they are pesticide free. There's no chemicals, no nothing na nasty or harmful going into them. The only thing is that it's in the wild. So there's a lot of tiny little animals and stuff like that. So it's obviously very, very dangerous to your snakes and other reptiles. So you have to treat them first. So first I like to boil them in hot water to kill off all those nasty bacteria and stuff like that. And then to dry it off and then as an extra protection, I like to bake them for a couple hours to make sure that everything's dead and stuff like that. For example, let me put away this guy. In here we have uh, Romeo, my lesser scaleless head, and this is one of the hides that I use for him. So you can see it's very, very naturalistic little uh, bark piece. The only thing that I don't like about my uh, tub setups right now is that they look really, really boring. I know they're tubs, they're not meant to actually be seen and stuff like that, but I hate the paper towels, I hate these little uh, water dishes, so I'm hoping to uh, save up my money soon and then start getting, ooh, why do you get scared? I'm hoping to get a bunch of uh, bioactive soil, put it in here, and I'm thinking about having even isopods in some, in some tubs. Sounds pretty crazy, right? But that would be pretty cool because they will be able to help me, especially since I've been super busy. They'll be able to break down the waste of the actual ball python by the time I uh, actually come home and then I get to spot clean and stuff like that. So that would be super amazing. I hope I'm able to do that. So yeah, without further ado, let's just put this guy away. And that's pretty much it. Let's go back to this little clown in here. So this video was super quick and straight to the point. Like I said, I was just gonna move him in here cause I've been quarantining him for a while. So I decided to make a quick little video. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave a thumbs up. And if you're new, go ahead and subscribe. I hope this was a very useful uh, video. And if you have any other questions or concerns or anything like that, please go ahead and leave me a comment down below. If you want to see a specific topic on, on snakes, frogs, tarantulas, scorpions, you name it, I have it all and I am a fountain of knowledge. So I'll be able to most likely help you out. So if you want a specific video on a certain topic, go ahead and leave it down below. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. All right, and before I actually say goodbye, I know I just did an outro, but whatever. I just really wanted to say that I am very, very thankful for everyone that has been watching my channel. I recently been getting a bunch of subscribers and I think right now I am at 78 subscribers and probably like four months ago, I was barely like at 50 or something like that. It might sound like baby numbers compared to, you know, all the huge uh, YouTubers out there and especially because I've been doing this for it's about to be a year, so it's not like huge numbers or whatever, but I don't care about that. I'm just super thankful for everyone that has clicked that subscribe button, has ever left a thumbs up, or has ever left a comment on my video. And hopefully you guys are learning something from me, because that is my end goal. It might sound corny or cheesy or whatever, but I truly love and, and care for animals. And my goal is to educate as much people as possible in order for them to get a better reputation. Because a lot of times people hear snake, you know, especially in the general public, they hear a snake and they get all scared and jittery and they think that they're gonna get bit. So I just wanted to show everybody and educate everyone, kind of like my, my current idols, like 
uh, Brian Barczyk, Kevin McCurley, Justin Kabloika, but really like the person that really pushed education on all wildlife, not just reptiles. And you know exactly who I'm talking about. I'll leave a picture right here of him. But yeah, he really inspired me to really just teach people and inspire people to care for our wildlife here on, on planet Earth. So like I said, that is my current goal. And if you have ever learned something from me, even if it's the slightest thing, I am, I feel like I have completed my goal. I still want to reach to hundreds and hundreds of people, but it makes me very happy if, if anyone has ever learned anything from me. All right, so I'll really let you guys go this time. See you guys next time. Goodbye.